One of the biggest surprises during Gamescom Studio Opening Night Live was the announcement of the next entry in the Little Nightmares series. Here to tell me about Little Nightmares 3 producer Coralie Faniello. Welcome! Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you for having us. Now, first things first, we've got new protagonists. Can you tell us a little bit about these characters and who they are, what they can do, and what sets them apart from Six and Mono? Yeah, so in Little Nightmares 3, we have two new characters, which are Lo and Alone. So uh, Leo is the one with the cape and the mask. Uh, he is uh, here since a long time now, but he has never lost hope and he's looking for a place that will bring him home. And alone, she is the girl with uh, the goggles and the helmet. So uh, she is uh, Leo's best friend and she's also a tinkerer and she's very curious, trying to find new secrets about the places where, that they will visit. And you've added a very, very much requested feature, which is co-op. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yeah, indeed. So co-op was one of the mostly asked feature from our community. So we're all really happy that we can implement it in Little Nightmares 3. So uh, in the game, you'll be able to play in online co-op with a friend. Um, you, we also have a friend's pass, meaning that you only need one copy to play with a friend. That's awesome. And does it, it has split screen or is it just online? No, it will, it will be online. Uh, we, we wanted to implement it that way because we think that a uh, split screen doesn't fit with the universe of Little Nightmares. We really want to keep that immersion like that, very atmospheric feeling that you will have. Now, it looks like the, the characters can collect items. Can you tell about how that sort of fits in with the puzzles and it has, how it goes with the theme of the game? Uh, and I guess any other new mechanics that they, they have? Yeah, so uh, that will happen sometimes in the game. Uh, you will be able to collect an item, use it for solving some puzzles, and then you will have to let it go. Uh, but the players will also have two new items. Each have their own. So Lo has the bow and arrow, and uh, Alone has the wrench. And we are using them uh, in order to create more puzzles and to promote like cooperations between the player and uh, if you are playing in single player between the player and the AI. In terms of tone, uh, can you set the stage a little bit and tell us about the setting of, of Little Nightmares 3? Um, yeah, so uh, in terms of tone, like each chapter will be very different. Uh, each chapter has its own uh, atmosphere, its own story, on enemies and uh, so you will be able to uh, go through each of them, but they are all part of the same place in the nowhere. So the nowhere is the place where Little Nightmares games take place. So all of the locations of Little Nightmares 3 are in the spiral, which you will be able to discover. Now uh, we got to look at some gameplay from uh, the uh, is it the, the sort of city of the city of the dead? It's kind of like a desert setting. Yeah, the 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 place that you can see in the gameplay is the necropolis. So uh, in that place. Uh, it was before the place where the dweller were living, but then the monster baby arrived and, well, it, it, she made the city what it is now. So you can see that there are some statues around. You can see that uh, it is now very quiet, uh, except from the beetles that will attack you. Now, the, the first two games are very, like, there's a lot of gloom and shadows, and it's very, you know, kind of what people think of when they think more conventional nightmares, but from what we've seen in the necropolis, it's very bright, like it's, you know, daytime in the desert. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the sort of the reasoning for the shift and also some of the challenges with making, you know, matching, matching that sort of, you know, expected kind of vibe of the game while it's still in, in broad daylight? Yeah, so uh, in the necropolis, it was a challenge to have like a desert and like some, some light, much more light than uh, what we have seen before. But at the same time, to keep what is the atmosphere and the DNA of the the Nathan Atmos games. So um, what we have done is that we are we have used a lot the environmental storytelling. So you can see bags all around. You can see stuff going on, and, and then uh, that plus the music and the general atmosphere is what creates uh, the an ease feeling that you will have in that place. But the other chapters of the game would be very different and you would be able to see yeah, some different uh, places there and some different locations that uh, will show more. Nice. Now, at this point, we kind of have a clear idea of what a Little Nightmares game is. Uh, I, I guess I'm curious what the sort of internal philosophy is. Like, what are the pillars of a Little Nightmares game? Like, what are the sort of, are there any rules that you can't break in terms of making this game? Like, you can't just turn it into like a, you know, a full on, you know, like run and gun platformer or something. I guess how do you, how do you how do you change the gameplay while still keeping it you know true to the core core idea? 
Yeah, so uh, little that mess, uh games have like main pillars, which are uh, the darkness, the dystopian aspect of the society in general, and um, the hope, because there is always a light of hope. So uh, we really want to keep these three main elements across the different games, and that's why what we are doing in the Tenatmos frame. Nice. Now, uh, some big, some exciting news here is that Supermassive Games is working on this, and that's a studio that has an incredible track record making, uh, I guess what I call much larger nightmares, you know, big cinematic, uh, realistic horror games. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how the team's prior experience has affected Little Nightmares 3? Yeah, so it's great working with uh, Supermassive Games. They have an extensive knowledge of horror in general, but they also understand very well and very deeply uh, the the franchise. Like they are all really passionate about it, and they they work hard in order to get into it and to like use their knowledge from previous games. And so that goes from the horror, but also uh, the fact that they implemented like multiplayer in the previous games in order to like bring them into the franchise with their own eyes. Cool. Now, fans have uh, done a lot of sort of digging and picking apart of Little Nightmares, and I like that there's just a lot of, there's a lot of mystery to it. Uh, can you just kind of blow some of that mystery away and tell us uh, where Little Nightmares 3 takes place on the timeline, sort of chrono chronologically? Uh, not really. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's something we really want the player to figure out by themselves, like where we are in the timeline, and so we want them to, yeah, to dig into that. Now, there have been, you know, in addition to the, the you know, the two soon to be three console games and the mobile game there have been some comics and now there's going to be a new sort of transmedia experience which is uh going to add to the universe it's it's just audio only is that right yeah it is a podcast yeah tell me how that works because i feel like this is an extremely like you know non-verbal series like it's all about environmental storytelling and visuals i guess how do you how do you match that tone and what does the podcast sound like <laughs> Yeah, sure. So um, the, the the podcast will take place in the counties. So Little Nightmares lore is quite extensive, in fact. So you have just seen the surface of it. So <laughs> the podcast is in the counties, which is the real world, but the nowhere is the place uh, that the video games are showing right now. The nowhere is like the nightmares. So in the podcast, you're in the counties and you listen to Noon, which is a little girl we, who has uh, night terrors. So she goes to a psychiatric uh, hospital and she talks to Otto, a counselor, and she tells her nightmares, basically. And so Otto will try to dig into that and to understand what is going on and what is the Norway and the secrets of it. Wow, that it, it sounds really <laughs> creepy to listen to a child talk about nightmares on a podcast, but... I'm sure fans will be super into that. Uh, Carly, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before we go, can you tell us when players can get their hands on Little Nightmares? Three. Yeah, so the game will be in 2024. Uh, it could be on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Wonderful. And uh, what about the podcast? When is that uh, premiering? So the two first episodes are available like right now in the Gamescom. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm looking forward to Little Nightmares 3. Yeah, thank you.